Thanksgiving is a time to gather with your loved ones over all kinds of good food. Mm -hmm. And with that feast can come some hidden dangers when it comes to your pet. Yeah, with more people around the house for the holidays, that does mean more hazards to look out for for our furry friends. So joining us live with some tips to make sure that our fur babies stay healthy and happy this year is veterinarian Dr. Crystal Carey with Wellhaven Pet Health. Good morning. Great to see you again. Morning. Thanks for having me back. Of course. All right. Those holiday food dangers. It's just, you know, we, we talk about it every year around this mm -hmm. time. Great reminders. What should we avoid feeding our pets? Uh, the answer is kind of sad, and that means most things off of our plates. Mm -hmm. Everything. Um, <laughs> don't share. <laughs> the meats. Yeah, the meats do tend to be a little bit too fatty for dogs, even the ones we think of as being a little bit leaner. Turkey, turkey skin may not be a great idea for their little tummy. Um, they can end up with pancreatitis, which can land them in the hospital pretty quickly. So um, no onions or garlic, I see there on the screen. Um, definitely grapes or raisins, no chocolate. And then xylitol is something that's found in sugar-free foods and sweets. So um, best to not give those to your pets. Okay, yeah, and, and even when it comes to turkey, I know sometimes, you know, you think about tossing a bone over to, mm. to your dog, a turkey bone or a ham bone, but, but those, if they're not specifically made to be pet treats, those can be dangerous too, right? Right, yes, bones can splinter, bones can break teeth, um, bones can get stuck. So yes, definitely. And it's hard because you want to include them in yeah. the, the family fun. Well, um, so they've, they've got those nice puppy dog eyes. eyes. That's what I was going to say is I, I think about my dog with those puppy oh, dog eyes. He knows how to, how to use them. Or your, yeah. or your cat will finally show you attention. You know, <laughs> they, they know. Right. <laughs> yeah, I just maybe have some treats standing by specifically for them so they can be included because I'm with you there. Those little eyes, it's just too hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tough, tough to say no. What, what other ways can you include your, your pets? Is it just having a treat on standby or is there something else? Um, basically, just being mindful of how they are with, with family gatherings and lots of people. So keeping them safe and comfortable is, is good. Some dogs love and cats love, love company and others just may not appreciate that as much. And so having a safe place for them in a different room or in their crate, maybe with their favorite snack or treat might help keep them more calm and relaxed during the, the gatherings. So I'd consider that beforehand. Yeah, I think sometimes we always, we think about pets in terms of how we would view a situation and mm -hmm. you think, oh, I want them to be part of the family, but you don't always think about, you know, they don't understand right. what Thanksgiving be, is. Be a bit stressful. You feel like you're leaving them out, but they might actually have a lot of anxiety over having a bunch of people all of a sudden in the house. Right. I've got a couple of pets at home even who are happy, happy with people. And then I've got one who is just not going to have it. <laughs> so <laughs> um, it'll, it'll be nicer for him, I think, to be in a separate room. So yeah. that's something I think a lot of people can can think about and give them, you know, their favorite snack or toy to, to keep them comfy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, travel, obviously, you know, a lot of people oh, have yeah. to travel for the holidays, whether it's traveling with the pet or without the pet. What should pet owners keep in mind when trying to uh, make their travel plans for the holidays? Yeah, that's a big one. If you're traveling with your pet, definitely look into what you need. And so do you need a health certificate for them? Do you need proof of vaccines? Do they need medications to take with them? Stuff like that and contact the vet ahead of time so that you can get that scheduled. Um, if you're traveling without your pet and maybe they need to be boarded or something like that, same thing with those vaccines. Lots of boarding kennels require specific vaccines. Well, they all should. And so calling them ahead of time and then calling the vet to get those scheduled and making sure you have all of the documentation that you need um, is really going to be ideal ahead of time. Yeah, good thing to, if you haven't already taken care of it, get it done this week for sure. Real quick, Dr. Carey, we're almost out of time, but uh, for, for most general vet clinics, are they going to be doing holiday hours? If, if an emergency does happen, what should pet owners plan on doing? That's a tough one because we are actually kind of in the state right now where a lot of ERs are kind of overloaded, similar to the, the human side. Yeah. And so the best thing you can do is I honestly Google 24 hour pet hospital near me and start calling. If there is a severe emergency, just start driving to one. They'll help you. Um, but call, call the ERs and see what the wait time is like. Yeah. Um, a lot of regular veterinary clinics aren't probably going to have um, extended holiday hours. And so it'll be most likely urgent cares or ERs. Mm. All the more reason to try and, you know, be aware, yeah, plan ahead, keep them out of the kitchen and avoid those emergencies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
All right, Dr. Crystal Curry, always appreciate your time and uh, great tips ahead of the holidays. Of course, uh, yeah, that's an, another reason to be extra cautious yeah. this Thanksgiving with our with our fur babies. All right, we'll see you later. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. And uh, if your pets need to check up, Wellhaven has several clinics across our area. That is wellhaven.com for more information. Yeah.